Hello, I'm James and welcome to Maths Kitchen. In today's video, I'm going to be going through five tips to help you in the calculator papers of your maths GCSE exam. And I'm going to be focusing on little mistakes that sometimes people make. I'm going to be showing you how you can avoid making those mistakes. So I've put a bank of practice questions relating to everything that I talk about in this video, and that's at my website, mathskitchen.com. It's completely free, it's interactive, so you type in your answers, you get immediate feedback whether you've got them correct or not, and there are model answers showing you how to do all of those questions if you're stuck uh, or you need a bit of help. That is mathskitchen.com. So the first thing I want to look at is to do with standard form and the way that you type those kind of calculations into your calculator. So the example I'm looking at is we've got 2.6 times 10 squared divided by 1.3 times 10 squared. Now, if we think about that, 2.6 times 10 squared is 2.6 times 100, so 260. And divided by well, 1.3 times 10 squared is 1.3 times 100, in other words, 130. So I can actually do that in my head. 260 divided by 130 is 2. So we know the answer should be two. Now, one way that people will sometimes type this into their calculators, and this is the wrong way I want to say before I show you this, is they will type it all in like this, 2.6 times 10 squared divided by 1.3 times 10 squared, and that gives you an answer of 20,000. And that's because of the order in which your calculator is doing things. So there are two ways to avoid this mistake. The first way is just to put those standard form calculations into brackets. You can see that I'm doing that there. The second way is to use the standard form button on your calculator. So instead of typing in 2.6 times 10 to the power of 2 or 10 squared, you just type in 2.6 and then you use that button there, times 10 to the power of x. And so then you just type in the 2. So it looks slightly different, but that just means 2.6 times 10 squared. Then I'm going to do the same thing for the second part, so 1.3, and I use the times 10 to the power of x button there, and I type in squared again, hit equals, and it's given me an answer of 2, which is what we expected to see, isn't it? So that is tip number one. When you're using standard form, either put those into brackets or use the standard form button on your calculator. So the second thing to look out for is when you are squaring negative numbers on your calculator. And this could come up, for example, if you were using the quadratic formula and you were having to substitute a negative number into that, or in fact, substituting into any formula where you end up substituting in a negative number. Now, let me show you an example. If you type into your calculator negative three squared, like that, it tells you that the answer is negative nine. In fact, the answer is positive 9. It's just 9, okay, because we are multiplying negative 3 by negative 3. And when you multiply two negatives together, you get a positive answer. So the way to get around this and to get your calculator to do it correctly is to put brackets around that negative 3. So negative 3 in brackets and then square it. And you can see there, that is giving us positive 9. So when you are squaring a negative number, make sure you put it into brackets. So the next thing to look out for is relevant whenever you're doing questions to do with trigonometry, you know, soccer toa. And it is to make sure that your calculator has a little D there. Okay, that D stands for degrees. So in day-to-day -day life and in GCSE, when we're talking about measuring angles, we describe those in degrees. There are 360 degrees around a point, 180 degrees on a straight line, 180 degrees in a triangle, and so on. But there are other ways of measuring angles in, in just the same way that we have different units of measurement for length. For example, we could talk about something uh, in meters or in miles. You know, we've got different ways of measuring length and it's just the same for measuring angles. So the other two ways that we measure angles are using radians and gradients. Now, you don't need to know about those for GCSE, but useful to know that they exist and to make sure that your calculator is set to measure in degrees. If it is set to radians or gradients, you'll see it there because it will have an R or a G. Now, it's less easy to change it by mistake. Some old calculators, it was really easy to just change between degrees and radians and gradients. And you would often get a wrong answer because you just changed it without realizing you had. But if anyone else has touched your calculator, it's worth 
checking. And if it isn't on degrees, the way to change it on these Casio calculators at least is you need to go to Setup, which you do Shift and then Setup. And can you see there it's got three represents degrees and then number four is if you want radians and then five is if you want gradients. So if you press number three for degrees and there you go, it's onto D. So tip number three, make sure your calculator is set to degrees. So the next tip is not a mistake that you might make with your calculator, but it's how to use your calculator to help you to avoid making a mistake with your written workings. And this is probably best illustrated with an example. So let's say you've got a question like this one, where you are being asked to work out the circumference of the circle. Now I'll talk you through this question quickly. To find the circumference of a circle, we multiply the diameter by pi, okay? In this question, we haven't been told the diameter, but we've got this triangle within the circle and we can use that to calculate the diameter. And we need to find out the hypotenuse of that triangle and we can do that using Pythagoras. So we remember that Pythagoras, you need to do a squared plus b squared and that will tell you what c squared is. c squared will be referring to the hypotenuse. So we need to do 3.5 squared and 9.7 squared and that will tell us what the hypotenuse squared is. Okay, so let's do that. We've got 3.5 squared plus 9.7 squared and we'll convert that to decimal. So it's 106.34. Now, one way that you could do this is just to jot down 106.34, clear that, and then I'm gonna find the square root of 106.34 and that is actually reasonably practical, but you can certainly imagine a situation where you're having to write down really long numbers. I'm sure you've done that. You end up writing down these numbers with you know, eight decimal places in them. And the way to avoid that is if we go back to this stage, we've done 3.5 squared at 9.7 squared. That gives us 106.34. If we just type in the square roots and then press the ANS button, that, whenever you press that ANS button, it brings back the answer to the previous calculation. So that is going to find the square root of 106.34 for us. And it avoids us having to type it in again. And that's useful because whenever you're writing stuff down from your calculator, and whenever you're typing stuff into your calculator, there's just a chance that you might make a mistake with, with your writing or with you know your fingers on the calculator. So if you can avoid that in any way, then that's always the best thing to do. So I'm gonna clear that, and now the next thing is I want to work out the circumference of the circle, and I remember what I have to do is multiply that previous answer by pi. Well, I'm gonna use the exact same thing again. Even though I've cleared it, it doesn't matter because the calculator remembers the previous answer. So I just do that again, ANS times pi. That gives me the answer, 32.3965. Incidentally, in these calculator papers, they very often ask you to round off the answer to two or three significant figures or to two or three decimal places. So that's well worth practicing if you're not confident with that. It's bound to come up quite multiple times, probably. So the last tip is about not trusting the answer that your calculator gives you. Now, obviously, your calculator is never going to make a mistake. Whatever calculation you give it to do, it will always do it correctly. But you might have made a mistake in typing it in, or you might have missed out a particular step. So let me illustrate this again with an example. Here we've got another triangle. We're going to use Pythagoras theorem again, and we're going to try and find this missing length here. So we've got a triangle that has lengths of six meters and eight meters, and we're trying to find this hypotenuse and we remember Pythagoras theorem, a squared plus b squared equals c squared. And so we do eight squared, add six squared, and we do that on our calculator, eight squared, add six squared, and that's 100. Boom, we found out the length of the hypotenuse, it is 100. And we move on to the next question. Now I made a deliberate mistake there. I should have square rooted the answer at the end. So that hypotenuse is actually the square root of 100, which is 10, okay? But I forgot to do that. And we make these mistakes, particularly in stressful situations, which is what an exam can be, isn't it? I'm, I'm sure lots of you, most of you, even possibly even all of you, will be anxious in that exam. You'll be a bit stressed and you're just more liable to make these sorts of mistakes. So my advice is, when you get your answer at the end, just check, does it seem reasonable? Because in this example, 
if you had just looked at a quick sketch of the triangle, even if it was just a very rough sketch, you know, definitely not to scale or anything, but it would be pretty obvious that that triangle could never have a length of 100 if those other two lengths were 8 and 6. So don't trust your calculator and at the end of each question, wherever possible, just have a quick think, does this answer seem plausible? So those are my tips for the calculator papers. When you're using standard form, either put it in brackets or use the standard form button on your calculator. When you are squaring negative numbers, make sure you put those in brackets as well. When you're solving trigonometry problems, make sure that your calculator is set to degrees. Wherever possible, use the A and S button instead of having to write lots of things down. And finally, don't trust your calculator. Just do a quick check at the end of every question or at least wherever possible just to ask yourself whether the answer seems plausible. So that's it. I hope you found it useful. Don't forget I've got other videos up on some recommended revision topics for those calculator papers. So things that often come up in the calculator papers and that haven't come up in that first paper. This is for the 2019 GCSEs. Uh, I'll put a link to that up here and down in the description as well. And at my website mathskitchen.com there are practice questions for all of the things that I've mentioned today as well as loads of other practice stuff to help you with your GCSE maths revision.